the uh, system costs around £6,000, which is expensive, and there's a lot of people out there that are gonna sort of get knocked off their chair um, hearing that price, but when you think about it, uh, wah, <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Supercars of London and Living with a Supercar, the six months update. In the first series of Living with a Supercar, I didn't talk about the running costs of owning an Audi R8 V8. And that was because I'd only owned it for maybe uh, two to three, maybe four weeks. So um, now that I've had the car for six months, I've been um, definitely getting accustomed to how much money you have to spend to keep this car on the road, which is actually a lot more expensive than I was expecting, um, which is very frustrating. <laughs> start with let's talk about um, the illusion that a lot of people get when buying a second-hand supercar so this car costs new £95,000 so every single bit of the running costs the parts the servicing was aimed at a £95,000 car like with Ferraris when they're £150,000 £200,000 they've also got the running costs of a £200,000 supercar when you buy this car at £40,000 maybe three to four years old you um or my deception or illusion was that because it's £40,000, you're also paying the running costs of a £40,000 car, which is definitely false. People that think a GTR that costs £30,000 is gonna be cheap to run because it's £30,000 is definitely um, a bad example. That car is even more expensive to run as this, so I'm really glad that I didn't get a Nissan GTR because this is expensive to run. This video is gonna talk about some of the running costs, how much it costs per month for fuel, uh, what it's like to service the car, to upkeep, and also some of the customizable optional extras that I've put on the car. So, um, let's go. Let's start with the fuel of this car because this is definitely the main consistent cost that comes with running a V8 4.2 litre from Audi and you may have seen the first fuel stop that I ever did was an absolute fail when I broke the button in the door. If you haven't seen it, uh, definitely go and check it out because it's quite funny and uh, definitely something that I won't forget in a long time. The fuel on these cars, it has around 85 litres. It holds 85 litres of fuel. Even though it's a 4.2 litre, which really confuses me all the time because I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to cars, it's a 4.2 litre car but it has 85 litres of fuel, which I think is quite impressive. It costs around 110 to 120 pounds to fill up, depending on where you, where you fill up. And one of the first things I did when I bought this card, card, car, was get a Tesco club card and also a Shell loyalty card, which I am racking up the points in because I'm spending pretty much one to two times a week at the petrol station. So if you're looking at how much it costs over a month, it's approximately 500 pounds of fuel if you drive it every day like I do. So um, it's definitely an expensive car to run, much more expensive to run than the Vauxhall Astra 1.6 that I had, which cost around 65, 70 pounds to fill up, and that lasted the month. So um, this fuel tank is 85 liters, and it normally lasts a week, maybe a week and a half. Um, but the amazing thing is that this car got me to Edinburgh on one tank of fuel. It was around 500 miles, and nine and a half hours of driving, which um, was really, really boring, but I won a hundred pound bet off the back of it. So the fuel cost of this car, around 400 to 500 pounds a month. As you can see across my car, I've got lots of stickers and lots of sponsorship. Now, a lot, a lot of people have said, take them off, they look hideous. And I don't disagree, but I also quite like it. It makes it look a bit race car-y, and it also reminds me of Gumball 3000. Gumball 3000, I drove from Edinburgh to Paris um, in this car. Now, I wasn't expecting the costs of um, running this car for the however many miles that I did, um, but we definitely incurred some uh, damage and wear and tear from driving that many miles in such a short space of time. To start with, I needed the front discs and pads changed, which um, was an expensive, um, uh, problem but we had to get them fixed because everyone needs brakes on a 420 brake horsepower car. The brakes cost near enough 1500 quid including the discs and the pads um, which gives you an idea of how much that sort of stuff costs. The service also costs around 1100 pounds and that changes the oil, the air filters, the pollen filters and all that sort of technical stuff that I have no idea uh, what happened. You would have seen from the video of when we were fixing my car that I have no idea what happened at SB Race Engineering, I just watched them do it. One other thing was the clutch problem that I actually had from buying the car 
and I didn't notice it until um, owning it and uh, driving it the next day, which was a real problem. I thought that it was going to be a clutch, and if it was, that would be £2,500 plus all of the labour to replace the clutch. However, I was quite lucky and it was just a clutch master cylinder, which um, is the bit that sits behind the pedal. There was a leak in that, so it wasn't um, engaging the clutch properly. We changed that for £150 from Audi and it was absolutely sorted and the car runs beautifully. Now the engine light, <laughs> a lot of you that have followed me on my journey of uh, living with this supercar, I've had this car for six months, like the video in the series suggests. Um, the engine light has been flickering on and off for quite a period of time and that's um, to do with cylinder misfires. Not continual or um, repetitive cylinder misfires, it's coming from different cylinders at different points of its time before it uh, fixes itself, which I hope is a sensor problem and fingers crossed we'll get that fixed as soon as possible. The position sensor in the um, cylinders is something that needs replacing and um, some of the um, symptoms of something like that going wrong is revving the car. Um, so I think I'm going to have to stop revving the car a little bit which is quite annoying. Um, but maybe I've been revving it too much, I just can't get enough of the V8 sound which um, I'm going to have to uh, sacrifice because this sensor needs changing and I don't want to be driving with an engine light on all of the time because it plays in my mind and I don't really push the car as much as I'd like to. So once that engine light goes off and the, si and the sensor gets changed, fingers crossed, that is it. So after Gumball 3000, we had the clutch master cylinder change, we had the service, we had the brisks, uh, brake discs and pads changed. Um, and we had an overall health check, which um, was around 2,500 to 3,000 pounds. Add that on top of the fuel bill. Um, that is uh, a lot of money that I don't really know how to work out. So maybe I'll do some calculations and put some fancy details in the video on my um, editing software. Lastly, I want to talk to you about the exhaust system because there's been a lot of questions regarding whether the exhaust system has got anything to do with the engine light, um, but also whether um, you need a remap on the exhaust system, how much it costs, how much it costs to fit, um, and all of these sorts of questions. So hopefully this little section is going to answer that for you. The Armatrix exhaust system costs around five and a half thousand pounds, and then fitting is on top of that. So I think uh, overall, the uh, system costs around £6,000, which is expensive, and there's a lot of people out there that are going to sort of get knocked off their chair um, hearing that price. But when you think about it, uh, ah, there's a <laughs> Right, that one. Back to the um, exhaust system. Sorry about that, I'm scared of wasps. Um, Yes, it's expensive, but it's titanium. It's incredibly light and it's incredibly well built. The technology as well with the Valvetronic system that you can have it on, off or auto and have the valves open at a certain throttle response of 50% or you can change it however. Um, it is definitely, definitely worth your money when you consider that how quiet the stock exhaust system is. So um, £6,000 for the exhaust system, including fitting. I sound like I'm doing like a sales pitch. Anyway, talking about whether you need a remap and whether it sets an engine light off. This is only a cap back system, so it doesn't touch the catalytic, catalytic converters. And now I'm going to sound really technological and I don't have a clue what I'm talking about. So um, technically, according to experts and forums on the internet and possibly Facebook, it shouldn't set an engine light on and you also don't need to remap the car. It's great if you do want to remap the car because you'll get even more brake horsepower out of it and uh, maybe better fuel economy. Um, but uh, it's not something that's necessary and I'm going to get out the sun because it's annoying me. Like I was saying, it's not necessary to have a remap um, and it definitely doesn't set the engine light on. That is completely separate things. The uh, engine light is the uh, camshaft position sensor. I think I got that right. And the Army Tricks exhaust system just has nothing to do with the engine light. We've plugged it into the diagnostics and it's got nothing to do with that. Wrap, usually the material costs between six, £600 and £1,000 depending on what you go for. Chrome is a lot more expensive, around £90 a metre, so um, it can vary between two and a half to £4,000 to £5,000 just for the material. But then you have to consider that you're probably going to have two people wrapping the car over a period of two to three days, so the labour gets very, very expensive. 
Wrapping a car is something that I don't particularly want to do too often because, like I said, it's very expensive. Um, so I have to get the colours right. I think for Gumball 3000, I absolutely nailed it and a lot of people love Team Iron Man. Um, however, changing colour is definitely on the agenda very soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but again, it's another cost. The running costs of the Audi R8 V8, even though it's 2008, are still fairly expensive and a lot more expensive than the Vauxhall Astra. Even a lot more expensive than I was expecting um, to buy a car. 355. There's always one Ferrari that um, knocks me off what, the roll that I was on. So, going back to signing off for this video before that Ferrari came in. The running costs of this car, and like a lot of second-hand supercars, it's more expensive than when it was new because it's been used. This car is 2008, and um, me purchasing it six months ago and uh, having as many problems as I've had with it, the uh, previous owners have probably abused it quite a bit. But that's normal because it's an Audi R8, it's a supercar. A lot of Lamborghinis get abused, a lot of Ferraris get abused, and that's the problem when you're buying second-hand. But it was a decision that I made to buy second-hand rather than first-hand so that I could put the exhaust system on, so that I could put the wheels on it and play around with some of the um, engine components. So it's a downside to the running costs of this car, and I'm pretty sure that the Audi R8 V10 is even more expensive to run. But it's just um, something that you have to live with if you're owning a supercar and seeing as this is living with a supercar I thought that I'll talk to you about the running costs. So now I'm going to summarise um, in fancy writing what it costs per month for an Audi R8 V8. Thanks for watching, make sure that you subscribe, I look forward to seeing you next week for another episode of Living With A Supercar 6 Months Update. Yes. It smells like um, a garden centre. <laughs> Let's open it up. Oh, that's what it looks like.